Are you lost when it comes to editing your YouTube videos? Or maybe you're just looking for a better way. Well, I'm going to show you a 10 step process for editing your YouTube videos like a pro, no matter what video editing software you're using. Hey, it's Mike with more tips for creating great video for your YouTube channel and beyond. Thank you so much for being here. You know, editing is one of the most powerful aspects of the video creation process. It can also be incredibly daunting, complicated and time consuming. And that's on a good day to edit efficiently and effectively. You need a system. You need a workflow. So I'm going to share with you a 10 step process that will take a lot of the guesswork out of editing your YouTube videos so you can spend more time concentrating on coming up with great content for your channel. All right, the first step in the process actually happens while you're recording, and that is marking the good takes. Marking the good takes while you're recording will save you tons of time in the editing process because you won't have to scroll through a ton of footage just to find the takes or the parts of the footage that you want to use. Now, if you're working with a team, you can have someone mark down the good takes while making note of the time code on the camera or the recording device. If you're working on your own, you can use visual or audio cues to mark a good take. So for example, after a good take, you could wave your hands in front of the lens a few times or cover the lens altogether. Or you can use an audio cue like clapping your hands three times. Then you'll see in the footage, in the waveform, you'll see those three spikes where you clapped and you'll know that before that was a good take. Video editing is a time consuming process as it is. The last thing you want to be doing is searching a mountain of media files looking for the right shot, graphic or audio clip. Organize your media. The most straightforward way to organize your media is by type. So you could create a folder or event in Final Cut Pro or iMovie for video clips, a folder for audio, including voiceovers and music and sound effects, a folder for graphics and photos. Another important part of organizing your media is labeling your media clips so you have some idea of what they contain. Obscure file names created by your camera or recording device are of little use during the editing process. Once you've organized your media, it's time to edit, finally. But where do you start? Well, there are many ways you can approach and edit, and a lot of it depends on the type of video that you're making. Now, if you're making a YouTube video where it's you on camera speaking and maybe some voiceover with some B-roll, you can start the video editing process by creating what's called a radio cut. A radio cut involves building an audio version of your video. So you edit together the clips of you talking to camera, any voiceover narration, any interview clips if you have them, until you have an audio version or radio version of your video. A radio cut is a quick way to tell if your video story is working or not before you get any deeper into the edit. A radio cut also acts as a great guide for the rest of the editing process. Another way to start your edit is to create a montage cut. So in this situation, you're going to probably lay down a track of music and then edit visuals on top of that music. So most likely you'll be laying in shots and then finding the best parts of those shots and stringing those shots together with the music. All right, with all your visuals edited into place, it's time to add transitions and effects. These are things like cross dissolves and wipes and dips in and out of black or white, etc. Or color effects like color correction or color tinting. Today's video editing software contains a multitude of transitions and video effects, but that doesn't mean you need to use all of them. Make sure that the transitions and effects that you do use actually enhance or emphasize your video's message, not distract from it. The next step in the process is to add any on-screen text. Things like lower thirds to identify on-camera speakers. On-screen text is an effective and efficient way to deliver information and highlight key concepts in your video. The cardinal rule with on-screen text is to make sure that it is readable, especially at small sizes. Leave your on-screen text on screen long enough for the viewer to actually read it. All right, now that the visual element of our video is locked down, we can turn our attention to audio. And when working with audio, the first thing I like to do is normalize my audio tracks. Essentially what normalize does is create a strong and consistent output level for your audio tracks. You can do this with various different filters in your video editing software called normalize or leveling. Normalizing your audio tracks will also expose any 
background noise, things like pops or clicks or weird mouth noises or breathing sounds in your voice tracks, background air conditioning sounds, weird hums, stuff like that. And that's the next phase of processing your audio, cleaning it. So this is where you're going to minimize any background noises in your audio tracks using the various filters in your video editing software, things like noise reduction. To edit out pops, clicks, weird breathing and mouth noises, you can use quiet parts of your recording called room tone. Now you could stop here and you'd have a pretty engaging and high quality video, or you can enhance the experience with music. Music can add an emotional element to your video and make it more memorable. Just make sure that the music that you do use in your video, at least on YouTube, is copyright cleared and royalty free. Or you could find yourself in some trouble. YouTube has an extensive and growing library of royalty-free music tracks to use in your YouTube videos. Another great music source for your videos is Epidemic Sound, which I use. They offer a special subscription for YouTube creators. Now, when selecting your music, just make sure that it fits the tone of your video. You know, having a heavy metal track underneath a Microsoft Excel tutorial may confuse the viewer. Background music that is too busy will distract from the information in the voice track. If you're using music, sound effects, voiceover narration, interviews, and on-camera segments in your video, well, that's a lot of audio, and it can quickly become an annoying, garbled mess if you don't balance all the different audio sources properly. And that's where the process of sound mixing comes in. Mixing is essentially the process of raising and lowering the output levels of your different audio tracks over the course of your video in a way that helps tell your video story. Now, mixing is very subjective, but there is one golden rule, and that is voices take priority. Voices typically carry the bulk of the story information. So when people are talking and you need to hear them, their voices should be front and center in the sound mix, with music and other sounds in the background. There are several ways to adjust the output levels of audio tracks over time. Some video editing software packages have a built-in virtual mixer. Some allow you to use keyframes to precisely adjust your levels. Others have built-in automation, like a ducking function, that automatically reduces the output levels of music and other sound effects tracks when voice tracks start playing. The final step in the editing process is export. You know, exporting your final video is a lot easier than it used to be. Pretty much all of the current video editing programs out there have built-in export presets for all of the most popular video hosting platforms. Not to say you can't tweak and experiment with your export settings, but just make sure that those export settings meet the requirements of your destination platform. But before you export and upload your final video, do a confidence check. Export a copy of your final video to your computer first, then check it back to make sure that everything is in order. You don't want to have to go back and fix an issue after taking all the time to export and upload your video to your platform, or worse, have the issue go public on the platform. All right, so you've exported your final video, you've uploaded it to your chosen platform, you're done. Well, not quite. You should really back up and archive all of the project files involved with your video. You never know what could happen to your computer or your hard drive. Best to make a backup and keep it off-site somewhere, in the cloud perhaps, or on another drive somewhere. Backing up your work is an often forgotten but very important part of the video editing process. Now, if you want to learn more about the video editing process, check out these other videos on my channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you're notified as soon as I release my next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.